Can you see me, guys? Oh, it's been so frustrating with my internet. I think I need to change my Wi-Fi. How are you, everyone, today? Hi, thank, <laughs> thank you for joining me today. I've been having this cough for a while. So, <laughs> it's not COVID, I have tested. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Happy Friday. Yay, finally you get to see me. Hi, you're so sick. Phoenix, good to see you. Hi, everyone. So, as you can see, today's discussion is going to be fiery. You know, it's called America's Attack on Meritocracy and how it will destroy America. So, I think you can truly see my positions clearly from the title. Uh, I decided to do this live because I just had an interview with uh, Kenny Shu. He is an author of this book called Uninconvenient Minority. And I just had an interview with him and I will upload our interview soon. So let you know that. But also I wanted to really share why this is so important even for me as an American gonna be. I will become American soon. And that we have to defend meritocracy. And I will explain how, you know, that killing meritocracy in North Korea, what it did to us as individuals. So before that, Alex, how are you and me? Oh, you're so sweet. I'm doing well. Uh, you know, I'm in Chicago <laughs> and uh, I'm traveling and excited to do this, talking about truth more. So Tam, Chris, thank you so much. I love the emoji. Anyway, so the meritocracy is, you guys can ask me questions, you guys can share with me with your views about meritocracy and you know your thoughts on it i'm here to listen to you and also i'm here to offer why i think killing meritocracy is gonna kill us all and take a it's a path to hell when i went to south korea i heard this thing first thing called if you work hard in south korea you're gonna get rewarded and in North Korea, I never heard of such a thing. No matter how much I wanted to work hard, like in North Korea, even though I want to become a dishwasher, right? I want to really, really work hard as a like the floor cleaner or dishwasher, construction work. If the regime doesn't say that I'm qualified to do that job, doesn't matter my desire to work hard. So if there was a meritocracy in North Korea, would, nobody would have to die, right? The people who work hard, who's going to put the effort and to think creatively, going to be promoted and the idea is going to compete and then the innovation going to follow. But instead in North Korea, before even you were born, your fate is being determined. Like if my grandfather was born in the communist side of the world, that I'm going to be privileged and go to, go to university, I'm going to become government official. And in America right now, I see that if your skin color determines what you get, and it doesn't matter the contents of character or how, the willingness to work hard. And this is where Asians attack coming in, right? Asians, all they got, even though they were discriminated, they got this willingness to work hard. And now America is going to direction where they do not promote hard work. You gotta be right skin color. You gotta make the right narrative. And that's how you get promoted and that's how you get opportunity. But then if we go this direction, like how do we choose our skin color? That is impossible thing. You cannot choose your skin color. Then that's not justice. Justice means like, based on how much you work hard as an individual, you get rewarded for that. Not because you are a certain color, not because you are a certain gender, not because you are meeting this, like, the narrative of minority. And this is a very communist thing. Like, a type of meritocracy is a very anti-free, anti-capitalism, and is very pure on, like, communist thinking. And this thinking of you know, this kind of thought is so embodied in, in our culture and most of people, especially younger millennials, thinking 
this is the way it should be. They do not question this ideology that attacks meritocracy. Uh, sorry, I missed a lot of questions. So, it's temple. Hey, Yami, quick question. Do you ever watch any of Dimper's videos? They host North Koreans to react and speak about their experience. Sorry to direct. No, no, I, I do watch Dimple. I did a few videos with them in the beginning and I think they create such amazing content. And Brittany, thank you so much. So, what? Well, that's why I, I'm like now. <laughs> So Brent, just bought a signed copy of your book. Yami, keep up the great work. Thank you so much. So what do you guys think? Like this attack on meritocracy out of nowhere. I mean, what made Western civilization become great is because simply they promoted comp competition and meritocracy. That gave us to rise this much prosperity. And now for the first time, humans don't have to worry about being fed. Right, most of our evolution history, we were starving. We are, we are not getting the basic needs. But now, because of this idea of in in capitalism, we promote meritocracy and competition. We got this like uh, elevated standard of living. And even in China, believe it or not, it guys in Chinese communist under communist regime, the fact they were able to grow their economy that quickly. They do promote meritocracy. They do promote hard work. And in order to become a government official in Singapore, in China, do you know how hard you need to work in school and how hard you have to do in test scores? And the fact that America now perceive the meritocracy as a white supremacist, or like white supremacism, and, and it is something that uh, colonial -like people would do, this is like the most nonsense I've ever seen. And it's, it's, it's heartbreaking how all these elite institutions like Harvard, Columbia, all these schools do. And even in embedded in the corporation, right? This every com corporation in America now have this like diversity training, racial quota, instead of us going us into just looking at individuals as who they are. Now we're just obsessed looking at what their colors, skin colors are. And it's, you know, if we go this path, we are going to end up like North Korea. I mean, unfortunately, that's the ending path, right? And people keep asking how North Korea become that way. And like exactly these kind of things led us to there eventually. And I'm not saying America is there now. I mean, we are far from it. But still, if we are not pushing, we don't push back. We are gonna end up there. And I think that's why I'm like, I chose to talk about this today. And <laughs> uh, let's see. So, guys, um, I think there were some questions about. Uh, so, yeah. So, hi, we Bob asked, have you seen the Dennis documentary, The More? Fascinating look at North Korea. Yes, I have watched it. It's a, uh, I think, Australian PB their documentary right and they they cover this journalist going into North Korea where they are pretending they're as if like billionaires and then they they go inside North Korea and North Korean regime showing them almost like what kind of missiles and weapons you can buy if you just give them money to the North Korean regime they don't care who buys these weapons of mass destruction they are just willing to set anything for them and in that they this he was so brave to cover that risking his own life uh, so hey good to see you is that saptarshi are you demoted in the north korean caste system if one of your relatives defects or get on bad side of, north, of the kims or other powerful people or just cared depends like uh if your relative were executed and then did like something remotely close to challenging the ideology of the party or the leader you are gonna send to concentration camps but like my father who committed economic freedom right i mean economic crime so north korea divides crimes into two categories one is political crime that is the most severe crime in the world 
and second is economic I mean crime. So they put even murder in the economic crime. So if murdering person in North Korea doesn't have as bad consequences as committing political crime. So for examples of political crime is that you see my book in the back there. Imagine that's Kim's photo and you did not see it in the front and then you by mistake ripped it or burned it. That is a political crime that's gonna get you sent to political prison camp along with the third, three generations of your family get punished with you. And like this is like one example, if your house caught on fire in North Korea, the first thing you do is not taking your children or parents and like carry them away. The first thing you have to do is protecting the portraits of Kim's. So every household in North Korea gotta have the portraits of Kim's. And if you let them burn, then three generations of your family get uh, punished for that. So that's the that's thing, like depending on the crime, that the punishment level changes to the family members. And, if, and that's the thing, like if you rape a woman in North Korea, they don't even know what rape is. There's really no such a thing raping somebody and you get punished. And if women get raped, that's women's fault. So <laughs> there's a one year North Korea published their like crime uh, record. Only like two people were punished for something related to raping women. And imagine how much more raping happening in that country because there is no protection for women whatsoever. And I mean, this is a something kind of thing that should boil our blood instead of, you know, how your feeling gets offended in this country. And it's, it's, I just hope that, yeah, we, I mean, it's just, as I'm like being in America more and more now, it's been over, it's been over five years living in America. And in the beginning, I had this, all this fantasy of land, right? America is like the land of justice. Everything's great. Everything is amazing. And it's not like I do not like America. I think America has been proven that its willingness to fix problems, it had a dark past, it had dark history, but it always wanted to fix it and improve it and then, and then give power to individuals, right? That's what's unique about this constitution that U.S. has. And there's now attack on America, attack on everything that made America great. Like attack on every single thing that made America to become the greatest country in human history, in the world. And now those values are all being attacked. So it's simple. You should watch the movie The Lobster. It highlights the absurdity of authoritarianism in a very funny but strange way. I will take a picture of that movie, okay. I will definitely watch that. It's, isn't it the, the first chapter of Dr. Jordan Peterson's book is about the lobsters, how even lobsters who have this organism of from how many hundreds of years old, they have this hierarchy. So when the left attacks that, you know, the hierarchy is like a man-made structure where they're trying to oppress others, he completely defeats that. Even chickens, like when you, when I, I love watching nature documentaries with animals, especially primates like chimpanzees, gorillas. They have a hierarchy. Not because humans are evil that we have a hierarchy. It's a nature of life, right, that we have a hierarchy. It is only natural thing. And so when you try to destroy that artificially, that creates chaos. So Emma Johnson, what are the relationship between people in North Korea and South Korea? So there's really no relationship between North Korean people and South Korean people. Not the defectors, because defectors, if we go to South Korea, then we do have a relationship with them. But the people in North Korea, they do not even we know the in existence of the internet. And they do not even, they are not even allowed to write a like letter <laughs> or like call, right? North Korean phones are not allowed to make international phone calls. They cannot write letter to the people outside the world. So it's a complete isolation and there hasn't been any relationship going on between people. So that's why the culture in North and South Korea has diverged so much. And even how we think has diverged so much, right? North is all about 
collectivism that like they say the nation is one family that we are all together and the south became very individualistic and they were also promoting ideas of competence and meritocracy and hard work and competition and that's how that's why despite the horrors of south koreans went through i mean the fact that in america because of your past was oppressive you you went through oppression therefore now you are forever victim is almost making them victim because think about south korea guys i mean like today uh, we are talking about meritocracy i think it's really good time to talk about south korea history right south korea went through japanese colonialism right <laughs> and then they were colonized by japan and japan did this thing called like comfort women they were taking all these girls and then make them sleep with the japanese soldiers during the war so it was a severe trauma in a country in a nation where sexuality and purity was everything about a woman and not only that, the men became slave to Japanese and supporting them in this cycle like, uh, World War II. And then after that trauma, what happened was they went through Korean War, the bloodiest, one of the bloodiest war in modern history. And Jap I mean, South Korea and North Korea became destroyed, like to became into ashes. There's really nothing was okay after the Korean War. It killed more than three millions of Koreans and allow her in the, in the south as well and in this ashes and in this oppressive past and pain koreans were never ever tasted good life in their history they were always under the king and under china they were always attacks from chinese and you know the mongols and Ch i mean japanese they were never had a good time and these people went through so much oppression still was able to create miracle they became 11th largest economy in the world right with such a tiny country do you know the south korea and north korea combined together smaller than california smaller than texas the state and then dividing north and south that half and that tiny country's economy is worth the 11th largest and do you know how South Korea did that? Because they were pr promoting meritocracy. They were saying it doesn't matter what your past is. It doesn't matter your color of skin. It doesn't matter the gender that you have. All it matters is like, your willingness to work hard and think hard and compete with other people. That promotes innovation and that promotes equal opportunity, right? That, I mean, Equal equality means that we have access to equal opportunity. And then that equality, not equality of outcomes, but equality to try, give a shot to this equal position and equal job and reward. That made South Korea create K-pop. And all these people are now like promoting equal, equal representation in Hollywood. They are trying to art artificially including people and one of the point that I was talking to Kenny about with the author of Uninconvenient Minorities that what was fascinating about it is like look at the rock I mean the hip hop right the African Americans in this country they they did it on their own that's what they were good at and promoting and they became the top of in this industry there was no artificial factor making them going into NBA why they are like majority of them are black players because they are good at it and we are not here as an Asian saying, oh, because there's no representation in the NBA of Asian people, we need to artificially get rid of black people and then add us there because we are a minority. We don't do that. And even in Hollywood too, like right now, if you go on Netflix, how much K-pop and South Korean contents do you see? This is what free competition, free market does. You don't need artificially representing anybody. It just market corrects. And if people work hard and think differently, then we are going to come up with a content that is appealing to the general public. And we all win at the end of the thing, right? Nobody loses when we promote meritocracy. But when you promote meritocracy, somebody always loses. Like you look at the Thomas Jefferson school, school that number one high school in America, that vigorous, vigorously tests people on their merits. That 
based on their I mean test scores right 75 percent are Asians but as now they're promoting um, uh, what equity uh, fair representation by different gender I mean race now they are cutting down Asians quota so when we do not promote meritocracy we always harm certain group and that is injustice and that doesn't do good do any good for all of us right so hey Ma Maureen good to see you. do you think our agreeableness as Americans is one of the reasons that wokeism has spread like wildfire agreeableness I think partially it is but then also the Americans inability to understand evil I think that's what it is that Americans are not quite able to see the evilness of CCP right now right the fact is companies are still trying their best to get into Chinese market I mean the one thing that is shocking is that China is not letting the these American companies uh, transfer Chinese yuan to American US dollars so these companies have no way out they have to be in Chinese market but they are still trying to go in and somehow trusting Chinese Communist Party I think that inability to see true evil that is number one thing and there's the Americans especially younger people are not studying history correctly and not able to see what this authoritarianism and communism did to human beings that is making them less critical and less sharp right and that that does eventually harm us all and I think Americans have done so much to the world they, we did, I mean American defeated Nazis I mean, what can be better achievement than that they have done so much and have eradicated so many diseases and lived to so many nations from poverty like Americans have the South Koreans to rise from the ashes to become the one of the wealthiest nations and and this country is not I, I wouldn't say arrogant right this country just hasn't seen the real terrors so far right this country the founding fathers did such a good job laid the foundation for this country to have prosperity have freedom individuals have freedom of speech but their work lasted so long and now when people started taking for that granted what the founding fathers did for this nation now that's what we are seeing this is this country is going down right because of that so yes yeah, so I think a lot of factors playing into why America is choosing this direction right now uh, so Mariana we can't stop praying oh thank you yes we gotta stop we gotta pray we gotta pray so Andrea Malia so was you, was you surprised when you saw a map of the world did you realize the world was so big yes I was surprised I was surprised to even even know how many race existed like I did not know there were Arabs there were blacks there I didn't even know that I was Asian like living in North Korea the the party told me that I was Kim Il Sung race the the dear leaders race I wasn't even allowed to be Asian and so knowing that it was shocking to know how diverse our world was you know seeing tropical countries seeing polar I mean North Pole South Pole seeing so much diversity it was I was so amazed to see how beautiful the world was and how beautiful people were and the things that I learned in the country was like you know how horrible the rest of the world is and how good we are how good we have and of course the truth was complete opposite so uh, so I so stop Tarsia again are there any IJA comfort women or or their families left in North Korea or are they just ignored in North South Korea it has been a very serious issue between South Korea and Japan yeah so this comfort women issue is huge in South Korea South Koreans are still not willing to let it go they do keep demanding Japan to apologize but this is like another thing that even though as much as a woman and went through rape and slavery 
I know the injustice of that. But the thing is, the people who, perpe who perpetrate that has passed away, who raped these women has passed away. And there are only a few survivors left. In South Korea, unfortunately, they are passing away. Japanese government did try their best to reparate, pay the reparation and apologize in their term. And at some point, enough is enough, right? At some point, we gotta move forward. Exactly something is happening in America. Of course, slavery was absolutely horrible. But the thing is, there is no mercy, there is no forgiveness. I think what Western value preaches, especially the Bible, is forgiveness. That's what is what made America great, is one of these values that we got is love your neighbors, despite they do wrong to you. Forgive, despite when they become very unreasonable. All these values are very unique to America because this country were, was founded by Christians. I wouldn't deny that. Like the people came from UK to to avoid the persecution of a religion, came this to country, did everything they could to respect different religion, different ideas, different belief. And and now, and in that belief they believed in was like one of them was forgiveness was a big part. But when it comes to Marxism and socialism and communism, there is no, there is no forgiveness, right? If one person does something wrong in that family, right, they own all of that family gotta be persecuted. And only way that you can get rid of that sin is death is not even enough. Death is not even enough, right? So that is so sad to see that South Korea in this going to struggle where what communists would do, where there's no mercy and there is no forgiveness, there's no moving forward. And that's why you see that America is dwelling on the, in this dark past and history despite they are acknowledging that that was bad, despite they know that that was horrible. Like 90-90% of Americans know that slavery are absolutely horrible thing that happened in this country and wanna wanna fix it and keep wanting to fix it but the thing that's not enough right nothing is enough for them and that's what is so sad about this ideology and it's eroding South Korean country even even though it was democracy now they're going this path of you know destruction it's really world trend so we and me you not read anti-Japan tribalism so yeah, of course in North Korea is all about anti-Japan, <laughs> right? Everything of that. It's all about hating your enemies, never about making peace and and forgive and have some grace, right? The, this country is losing God's grace and we need grace. We need mercy. We need forgiveness. People are gonna, you are gonna experience injustice, right? Like. I have seen so much injustice. I have gone through injustice. It has done so, it killed my own father. It did an unthinkable thing to my own sister. It did so much to myself and my people. But the thing is, that is the word. Like we are born, we are not born into paradise. We are born into very imperfect world where humans are not in, like perfect. And therefore, when injustice happens, we gotta fix it, but the thing is, we gotta also forgive at some point and move move forward. We cannot just dwell on that forever and forever and digging that thing, and nothing comes good out of it. At some point, you gotta move past it, and I think that's what we need in America too. Like it is so sad. Like despite the improvements these countries keep making and willing to make, still this country gets zero credit for that. Uh, so Kim Jong Un, 감사합니다. Uh, Richard Parker, have you ever read a, a Kim Jong Il production? It's about the kidnapping of Shin Sang Ok and uh, Jo Jo Jae Jae Eun Hee, Jae Eun Hee, right? Who were forced to make propaganda films for North Korea. If you're familiar with the story, do you have any thoughts? Yes, I even made a video about this couple who were captured by Kim's. So in this is a story about um, 
movie director and his former wife, a very famous top actress in South Korea. Kim Jong-il, the second Kim, one day sat down and thinking, our movies are not popular, right? He was like, so North Korean movies don't do well. I mean, for obvious reasons, because there was, they were not promoting creativity and individual freedom, none of that. It was all propaganda. So he said like, how can we make North Korean movie industry popular? And then they thought, okay, let's, let's kidnap the most famous movie director and the most famous movie actress from South Korea and let them make the movie for us. And that's what they exactly did. They do not respect the human rights. They do not respect anything. They literally went to, I mean, uh, ruled this actors, actress and the movie director to go to Hong Kong and then literally kidnapped them through a boat to North Korea. And then put this Shin sang -ok to the director into political prison camp because he wasn't confirming for two years. And then when he caved into, they brought him to Pyongyang and made them to make the movies for the regime. And eventually, thankfully, they were able to uh, escape from when they were getting awards, I think, going to awards show. In Vienna, they ran to the American embassy and eventually they came to California and Virginia. I think both of them passed away. Uh, yeah, this is a regime does that stuff that is like we in our common sense that we cannot comprehend. This is the thing, like when these guys get the power, right? All they care is like control. They don't care about how humans should be treated. And all they want is their own maintaining the control and power. So MYR is like, uh, will North Koreans accept democracy or will it be another battle to change North Koreans' minds to free them? Of course they will accept democracy, guys. I mean, who wants to be slave? If you know what freedom looks like, they will never chose that path. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say that now because now I'm seeing in America, voluntarily they are choosing their own destruction. Voluntarily they want to be slave to a government, to a big government. So it is fascinating to, uh, to see the human nature. But I think North Koreans will want the democracy because they had socialism, they had a authoritarian government, right? They had an almighty party that promised to take care of healthcare, education, livelihood, every single factor. And then when governments takes all your rights away, they don't deliver that. They do not, they enslave you. So I do think who will be the next champions of individual liberty and free market and democracy is probably the people like Venezuelans, Cubans and North Koreans who experienced promise of socialism and what that's gonna do to their lives, right? They have, they know that those are all, all delusions and is lying. And or in order for these governments to control, take a full control, that's what they do. Giving you free handouts in the beginning, make themselves popular. And by giving you this few hundred bucks free handouts, they take your liberty away. And then eventually they come back, they're not gonna even feed you and they're gonna kill you if you do not conform. So yeah, I do truly know that North Koreans gonna embrace democracy with all, heart, all their heart. There is, yeah, they are gonna be get, become the biggest champion for freedom. Uh, because I know that like North Koreans are, when defectors, in South Korea, there's a 33,000 North Korean defectors in South Korea. Majority, most of them, <laughs> like, I don't know the exact number, but at least based on what I know, it's like over 95, 98% of them becomes conservatives, becomes an advocate for free market. And they become Christians, I mean, not unfortunately, but interestingly, they do become Christians and they become, yeah, and even though defectors came to America are like most of them become conservatives and and they do not support socialism. So that's gonna be an easy task to make them become, you know, support democracy. So Gunnar, good to see you, YM. I highly recommend reading Paradise Lost. It's extremely moving. Authors uh, suffered terribly writing it, knowing uh, SM is that Bible helps to understand it depth. Thank you. I will. Yeah, I will, I heard about that book, Paradise Lost. I will definitely look into it. 
So uh, let's see. I know, guys, I'm keep missing a lot of uh, questions. So Brittany, thank you again. It's simple. Here we go. So Alex, what do they teach about Britain in North Korea? What do you think of the UK? Mm. So they do not hate Britain as much than like Americans. They like America is like absolute their sore enemy, right? That absolute like need to be eradicated. But when it comes to Britain, they still say like the Britain like adopts like democracy and this thing called the like, capitalism is bad. It's like US is always our enemy. But they do teach for North Korean elite to study British English. They cannot possibly letting like North Korean to speak American English for elites who become diplomats and who gotta like you know gotta rule the country. So they instead teach British English to North Korean elites and and they even have a North Korean council in the UK. So yeah, they do hate the Britain, but not like as much. And I didn't really know, but I never even what London was, Scotland, England, none of that. I didn't know anything about the UK at all. I knew America and Japan and Russia and China. That's probably countries all I knew. I didn't even know there were different continents in the world. <laughs> so when I was here in these continents, like Australia, Canada, I had no clue. Like, you know, the countries like Africa, of course, I had no idea. So many countries are unknown to North Koreans. So NTN, Yemi, please check Harvard Law School professor John Ramsier's research on comfort women. I will, thank you. Yeah, that's, that must be interesting. Uh, let's see, so... <laughs> I, I mean, what do you guys think about uh, happening in Cuba right now? Uh, let's see, is that... Hmm. I'll be back, guys. It's, I need to change the internet and this is happening again then. I, did you guys read this like MSNBC uh, op-ed about how the American companies are selling out to China? But not only that, the like uh, Lowy like 89 is that right on here, the channels on YouTube that attacks uh, Chinese Communist Party, how they censor them. And, and that's like, uh, so how this like the cyber attackers come and you know do that. So I'm not sure like what's going on with my channel, but let's hopefully it's just the internet's coming like do, doing this every time. So Bruce, hey Yomi, I love your message and your philosophy. You are a very rich person inside and out and your strength. Thank you so much. You're so sweet, Bruce. Thank you. Uh, so Manikali, yeah, is that how you say? M-A-N-N-E. -N -N -E. Was it China or Soviet Union who originally founded the uh, founded North Korea. Was North Korea pro-China or pro-Soviet when Kim Il-sung ruled? Both. Mao and, uh, Mao and Stalin and supported Kim and supported Kim also during the Korean War. Uh, Kim Il-sung was more known to be a follower of Lenin and Marx, less Mao, but he did uh, talk about Mao as his dear comrade and they had a really good relationship. Like there's a saying that Mao said to when he was ruling China said the relationship between China and North Korea is like a relationship between your lips and your teeth. So imagine if without your lips, right, the air gonna come in and your, your teeth gonna be damaged, you cannot really eat, chew things. But without your teeth, with, with just lips, you cannot really eat things, right? Therefore, you need each other. You are codependent on each other. You can, without, I mean, losing each other, you are dying together. That's how, and also Mao lost his own son during the Korean War while defending the UN and the American army. So they, China has invested a lot to North Korea and keeping North Korea under communism. And yeah, they, they paid a lot of price to keep that country that way. To be, you know, in the most miserable condition. So 
Oscar, have you watched Equilibrium 2002? Starring Christian Bale, it's based on the book 1984. Wow, you guys are giving me so many good advices. I'm gonna take a picture of that too. I, I always look for this kind of suggestions because I'm still like very culturally not uh, aware. So I would love to always seeing those things. So Octavio, is that right? Hi Yanmi, what do you think about Japan's position as a Western ally in con contrast to China and North Korea? Do you support repair of Article 9? Is that the, the Japan's ability to arm themselves? Right, but because after World War II, they, we couldn't, they could not arm themselves because we didn't want them to attack again. And now Japan is saying China is threatening them, North Korea is threatening them, that we need to have a military again, if that's what I remember correctly. What I think about Japan, well, it is true Japan colonized Korea. They, it is true they were teaming up with the Nazis and did a lot of destruction in the world. They killed a lot of Chinese people. I mean, Philippines, I mean, how many countries got affected Japanese colonialism? I'm not denying the history. However, I always believe that people change and countries can change. Japan has its adopted, you know, democracy and lesson that this like a uh, meritocracy, right? How pro how much they promote competition merit merits, and also it, Japan has done so much for the world too, like with their innovations, with their you know talents. So I mean, even with their food, personally, right? So I do, at this point, we need more allies become stronger, especially like the countries like Japan, who has ability. I mean, this time what China did that, if Japan supports Taiwan in any way, even with one soldiers, they said they're gonna nuke Japan. This is what CCP is saying. They were saying, if Japan got nuked once, so it'd be easier to nuke them even second time. So the threat to Japanese autonomy is absolute truth, right? Japan gets threatened by North Korean regime, China all the time, literally all the time. They cannot be just keep relying on American defense for them because like you look at America right now, under Biden, it's so in ambiguity. America right now must stand up saying, to Chinese government saying, you cannot ever invade Taiwan. We are gonna back them, we're gonna come with you full. But America doesn't do that. America is like, oh, our positions are not as clear, right? They, they are playing this ambiguity card and it's disempowered Chinese Communist Party. They are not clearly saying we are with the Taiwan fully 100%. If China ever does a thing that they did with Hong Kong, we are gonna go with the full, full, full pushback. And in the fact that America and the Western democracy were, countries were letting Hong Kong to taken over by its Communist Party, like that is a shame on us. It's shame on any Western leaders who would allow that because, I mean, how many people, like more than half of the Hong Kongers went on street demanded democracy and they still didn't win, right? It, it they said, this is the thing, like, this is like how hard, how cruel these regimes are. They don't care about the majority's desire. So now um, America is not backing Taiwan like fully. So in that sense, how the heck, why would Japan trust America when they're attacked by China, that America are gonna do the right thing? I mean, they cannot trust that. So I think I believe in your own defense as a country. You have to have ability to defend on your country, your, your own citizens. And this is where I clash with the anarchists that who believe that no borders, no military whatsoever. And they have good, fair argument. But I do think it's a little bit of like la-la land for me to see because I, I saw true evil. I wish that people were not that bad, but there are truly bad people in the world. And and socialism and communism give rise to these absolute horrible human beings. So yeah, Japan should, I think at this point, get, gain the ability to defend themselves from Chinese terror and, and North Korean like, uh, threat and 
they just we cannot rely on American government anymore. And even though I'm an American, gonna soon gonna be an American, it is so so disappointing how weak American government became when it comes to defending freedom and justice and human rights. This country became so weak when it comes to defending those moral values and just became obsessed with the nonsense. They having this internal conflicts for nothing. There's no real actual, like most of the problems they talk about is not actual problems, right? They're just creating, keep their own problems, keep in their head, keep creating this like systemic oppression and destroying themselves within. And it is just shocking and just heartbreaking. So Chloe, thank you, Hayami. We also need to acknowledge the great leaps that came from Europe when it comes to limiting government power, like the mega carta. As how to say great? I know what it is, but I don't know how to pronounce it. We owe a lot to the UK in the in that regard. I absolutely agree with that. The countries like the UK, who who I mean, who saw the importance of the freedom of speech and individual liberty. It just it's not just coming from one person or you know one country. It was a collective work that humanity gone through, especially this Western civilization credits goes to the UK, right? So I don't deny that. It's it's that's a history unfortunately. So Richard, do you think if North Koreans ever started standing up for themselves in a similar way, Cuban people at the moment, that leftists would have similar reactions they are having now? being more sympathetic to communist government? Of course they do. I mean, I mean, if North Koreans do the, what Cubans do, literally Kim Jong-un gonna kill them all with the machine guns and then wipe them out with the tanks, right? There's no journalists can go in, there's no internet, nobody can show us what's going on there. So there's no way we would know what's going on. But the thing is, uh, this, oh my God, this, what they are, how they're defending and then criticizing America's embargo on Cuba is just unbelievable. They are so lost. They are just so lost. I don't know why they would do this, something so dumb and something so harmful to, to this country and to themselves even, to their children. Like if this country ends up like Cuba and North Korea, who suffers? Their children. Like I don't know why would they do that to their own like next generation. Even even they think they become the elite, they are going to be the ruling class. But then in this thing, even the ruling class gets assassinated. And nobody is safe in that, in that scenario. I don't know why are they playing with the fire like this. So Rene Nio, you're so brilliant. How did you overcome limited North Korean education to excel educationally and intellectually even during slavery, special learning English? Thank you, you're so sweet. Uh, <laughs> I'm still catching up in the process. Maybe in a way that I didn't go to American public education system that really helped me a lot, right? Seeing how, seeing capitalism, socialism, not through textbooks and seeing how they are playing in real life really helped me. And also not going through this brainwashing education system and in American education system, even pretty much everywhere now, right? Education is really not helping you how to think. It's almost teaching you what to think and limiting your ability to think differently out of the box. And yeah, not almost like they are killing your ability to think on your own. And in that way, I was blessed that I didn't get any traditional education and I just had to teach myself and taking GED and reading my own books and choose the books that I want to read, right? Going from there. And that really helped me. So I am highly considering doing a homeschooling for my son too. In a way that going to school in this climate almost makes you dumber. That's what I thought. Like going to Colombia, I thought I'm going to become much brighter and smarter. And after four years, I feel like became dumber and more scared to think differently. On the Colombia, I was like this person have no fear. I was like, I was going to think freely. And after Colombia, I was like, wow, even thinking in this country differently has consequences like North Korea is. Thank you, Charles. 
any well guys that was amazing i know i ranted a lot today because i'm so passionate about when it comes to talking about freedom and meritocracy and human rights individual liberty all of these values and but i am so glad guys you guys are open-minded and coming here to hear my thoughts and teaching me this sharing with me your insights i love picking your brains up on these different issues it's you know everything is in progress i love going with you and you know fighting for these values with everything that i can i will fight for this country i will fight for all these values so thank you for supporting me thank you for my patreons uh, enabling me doing this work if you support my mission please join my on me unlockers and patreon i look forward to seeing you guys there too because i have a there FaceTime, I mean, no, Google Hangouts, so you guys can talk to me too. I don't have to be the one always talking. I love you so much, and I look forward to seeing you in the next live, guys. Love you. See you soon. Thank you. Diezo, thank you so much, guys. Have a good day, good weekend. Have a lovely afternoon on Friday. And let's keep fighting until we win because that's, you know, we, are, we have no other option left other than fighting back. So this is the only thing we got to do. Love you guys and see you soon. Bye. <laughs> Bye.